Light is a phenomenon that we observe every single day in the universe. I mean, if it weren't for gravity, me and you wouldn't be here together right now, talking. Gravity has been a topic of discussion and curiosity for centuries, and the first man to tackle this crazy phenomenon was none other than Sir Isaac Newton. Newton's model of gravitation told us that things in the universe have mass, and masses exert forces on each other, attractive forces, and it's these forces that we observe as gravity. Take the sun and the earth. Both objects have mass, and they exert attractive forces on each other, causing the moon and the earth to come together and stay side by side in orbit. Newton's model also tells us that the attractive forces, gravitational forces, between two objects depends on their mass and the distance between them. The greater the mass of the object, the greater the force of attraction or the force of gravity it can exert on other massive objects. The force of gravity or the force of attraction between two objects can also be increased if the distance between the two objects decreases. So I'm sure you've got the picture. Two objects with mass exert attractive forces on each other. But what about objects with no mass? I'm sure you know where this is going now. Light has no mass. So why is it affected by gravity? Well, we're going to discuss that today in this new episode of my series, A Road Through Relativity. To tackle this big question, we're first going to have to learn about Albert Einstein and his discoveries that made him the infamous physicist we know today. Einstein told us that gravity isn't actually a force and it is instead the curvature of space-time that causes the gravitational effects we observe in everyday life. First, let's understand what's called the equivalence principle that Einstein followed as he was deriving his thought experiments. The principle tells us that we are unable to distinguish between an accelerating reference frame and a gravitational field. Similarly, we are also unable to distinguish between a free-falling reference frame and floating in space. In this episode, we will focus more so on the first concept of the equivalence principle that I stated. Here on Earth, the Earth's gravitational field causes objects to accelerate towards the center of the Earth at 9.81 meters a second squared. That means if we were to throw a ball up into the air, it would come back to the ground at a rate of 9.81 meters a second squared. Now, what the equivalence principle is telling us is that the experiences we have on Earth in the Earth's gravitational field would be the same if we were in an accelerating reference frame. For example, the Earth's gravitational field is 9.81 meters a second squared. So if we were in an accelerating reference frame, like a rocket, that was traveling upwards at 9.81 meters a second squared, we would not be able to distinguish between this accelerating reference frame of 9.81 meters a second squared or the Earth's gravitational field of 9.81 meters a second squared. So if we were to throw that same ball from earlier, but this time on the rocket, the ball would still meet the floor of the rocket at 9.81 meters a second squared. But if we were to imagine it, it would more be like the floor of the rocket was coming up to meet the ball as it was in midair. So now let's imagine on this rocket, we send a light beam from one side to the other. Well, we know that light travels the shortest distance possible. So a straight line, the light would travel in a straight path, but we know that the rocket is accelerating upward and the floor is going to start approaching the light beam. Even though the light beam is traveling in a straight path, the rocket, the floor of the rocket, would begin to accelerate upwards towards the light beam as time passed, causing the light beam to appear as if it's taking a curved path. But it is not actually the light beam that is curved. It is the floor coming upwards towards the light beam. We can now recall the main idea of the equivalence principle. We cannot distinguish between an accelerating reference frame and the Earth's gravitational field. So it appears that light bends in the presence of a gravitational field. Einstein's theory of general relativity 
brought new ideas to light for our understanding of gravity. Instead of a mysterious force that propagated in a mysterious way, he told us that gravity is the curvature of space-time. As a simple analogy used by many scientists when explaining Einstein's theory of relativity, we can think of the universe as a fabric, and the fabric is space-time. Mass in the presence of space-time causes this fabric to curve in ways that simply aren't possible in 2D Euclidean geometry. The more massive an object, the greater the curvature of space-time around it, and objects in the presence of this curved space-time are forced to take really odd trajectories. With this being said, light as an object in the presence of this curved space-time has no choice but to take really odd trajectories like appearing bent. Light is still traveling the shortest distance possible, but it is no longer a straight line because space and time are simply curved. As light travels through space-time, it has no choice but to experience the curvature for itself. The shortest path in curved space-time is no longer a straight line, and it is instead known as what's called a geodesic. Okay, so I've told you light curves in the presence of a gravitational field, and I've told you why. But does this actually even matter? I mean, has this ever even had an effect on humans at all? Everything we observe in the universe is due to light beams traveling from the event to our eyes. But if light is curving, things might exist differently than they appear, more so in different positions than we have been observing. I'm sure we have all looked up into the night sky and seen stars before. While stars are constantly burning fuel and emitting energy, including light that travels from outer space into your backyard where you can see the stars from. Well, of course, if you see the star above you, the star is right above you. You see its position, right? Well, here's what Einstein's theory of relativity predicts for this situation. Mass is going to curve space-time, causing the light rays to become curved rather than traveling straight distances from the star's exact location to an observer, like you in your backyard. So what would this mean for what we are observing? Well, the light rays from the star are going to curve around any celestial body in its path. For example, if we were seeing a star that was somewhere behind or around the sun, the light rays from the star would have to curve all the way around the sun and then finally reach you in your backyard. Light bends in the presence of massive objects, meaning that celestial bodies far away like stars can appear to exist in positions that they aren't actually in due to the trickery of light bending in a gravitational field. Light has indeed traveled from the star to your eyes, but the path it took is different than the one you would have intuitively imagined. So when you look up into the night sky and see stars, the stars might not actually be directly above you. It is only the light that you see from these stars. The actual stars could be anywhere. After Einstein's theory of relativity was introduced to the world, this very phenomenon became a compelling topic of discussion. The idea of these false observed positions of stars is only in theory. But how can we actually prove that this happens? I mean, we are literally trying to prove our own eyes wrong. Well, prominent British astrophysicist Sir Arthur Eddington would go on to make one of the most significant contributions in support of Einstein's intricate theory. In 1919, a solar eclipse would occur on May 29th, and Sir Arthur Eddington would lead an expedition to maximize the rare opportunity of observing stars close to the sun during the daytime. The solar eclipse allowed for the scientists to observe the position of stars when they were close to the sun without sunlight blocking their view. The scientists then compared the apparent position of these stars at night with the position of the stars during the daytime during the eclipse 
and there was a shift in the positions. This shift confirmed Einstein's prediction that light bends in the presence of a massive gravitational field, such as the sun. Finally, the analysis of data showed that there was a shift in the apparent positions of the stars from when they were closer to the sun and when they were further away. It's said that when this occurred, Einstein became a celebrity overnight. The legacy of this moment will live forever as it demonstrates the power of experimental verification for advancing our understanding of the universe. So in this video, we discussed how gravity affects light, the journey towards this discovery, and finally, its consequences. This has been the second episode of my new series, A Road Through Relativity. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye!